organelles are basically defined as structures inside the cell that have a specific function. And organelles are divided into two types, membrane-bound organelles and non-membrane-bound organelles. Basically, membrane-bound organelles just means that the specific structures inside the cell have their own membrane. If you remember, we were talking about compartmentalization in the earlier video, where the cell creates a subdivision or a room so that it can carry out specific functions. So some organelles require a membrane so that they can carry out separate functions. Some organelles don't. The organelles that do not need membranes are called non-membrane-bound organelles. As a student, you must be able to draw out the organelles, especially if they do ask you that in Paper 2 of Biology. In Paper 1, and sometimes also Paper 2, you are also required to identify these organelles, especially when viewed under light and electron microscope. And, of course, you can't run away from it. You have to know the basic structure of each organelle and also their functions. So important things to know about the nucleus will be the fact that it is a double membrane organelle. It has nuclear pores, nucleolus, and chromatin. Chromatin is just basically linear DNA wrapped around histone proteins. If you are wondering what histone proteins is, do not worry about that. We will be addressing that in Chapter 5. And when we are doing Chapter 5, I will send a reminder I will remind you of this term chromatin. Now, as I zoom into the nucleus, you can see those two lines where the arrow is pointing. That is just basically pointing to the membrane. And you can see there are two layers, two lines. You can see there are two lines over there. And those two lines correspond to the double membrane of the nucleus. The tiny little holes interspersing the membrane is referred to as the nuclear pore. There's a reason why this pore or this hole exists and we will see that in chapter 6. Also, inside the nucleus, they have this condensed structure made out of DNA grouped together, and that structure is known as the nucleolus. Now, some students think, oh, is the DNA only found in the nucleolus? No, of course not. There are also chromatin floating around within this room, and I'm just highlighting it with the grayish colors over that. You might be wondering, oh, why can't I see the double helix? Well, you just can't because double helix is too small to be seen using light or electron microscopes for that matter. Over here, you're looking at two images of the nuclei look observed under the microscope. Just a bit of a revision. Which picture is taken using the light microscope and which one is taken using the electron microscope? Yes, the one on the left is taken using the light microscope and the one on the right is taken using the electron microscope. Because if you remember, light microscope produces images with color, electron microscopes will always produce black and white images. The nucleus, when observed under the light microscope, does not give you much of a clear image. You can kind of see that dark area over there, but it doesn't tell you much. You might be able to see the nucleolus when you're viewing it under the light microscope. However, when we zoom in into the image under the electron microscope, we can see this beautiful detailed image. We can see this beautiful detailed image because if you remember, electron microscopes have a resolution of 0 0.5 nanometers. It can pick out extremely tiny detailed structures. For example, that two arrows over there, they are pointing towards the double membrane organelle. They are pointing towards the double membrane organelle of the nucleus. You can also see the nucleolus, the darkening area, and the hazy structure surrounding the nucleolus is the chromatin. So when you're viewing, an, uh, when you're viewing a nucleus under the electron microscope, you just basically get a detailed image. Light microscope will not yield you much. You might, you will still be able to see the nucleus, but you are, you're not able to, you are not able to get a detailed image out of it. And of course, last but not least, we also have to know the function of the nucleus. In the IGCSC, it was sufficient to say that the nucleus was the brain of the cell and it controls cell activities. 
For A-levels, sadly, that won't be sufficient. What you have to know is, let's talk about it. So the nucleus is like a room, and the room contains genetic information, which is chromatin. You can put that in the exam. It is also the site of transcription, which is for protein synthesis. I will not elaborate on this yet because we are going to be looking at this in chapter 6. So do not worry about that. And last but not least, you also have the nucleolus within the nucleus. And the nucleolus is responsible for producing the ribosomes that the cell requires. For number two, we are going to be doing two organelles at the same time, the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, also known as rough and smooth ER. We have to know the general structure as usual, and they are single membrane organelles. And what do I mean by single membrane organelles? You can actually see that the membrane itself has a fluid filled space, and the entire thing is just basically known as a cystinate. I'm highlighting the fluid fill space over there, and you can see that. It's a single membrane organelle because if imagine if you wanted to enter the space within the endoplasmic reticulum, you will just have to cross one membrane. That is why it's called a single membrane organelle. Simple as that. Now, the single membrane over here forms an extremely weird shape called the network, also known as the reticulum. You can kind of imagine it to be like a branching of a single membrane to form this odd structure. Now, there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth and the rough one. Both smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum have the same general structure. However, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has two different features. Number one, it is studded with ATS ribosomes on the surface of the membrane. ATS ribosomes are just a specific type of ribosome that are only found in eukaryotic cells. And the rough endoplasmic reticulum may be directly connected to the nuclear membrane. It's not a fixed thing that, oh, it will definitely be connected to the nuclear membrane. Most of the time, you can find a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum directly next to the nuclear membrane. And as you can see over here, the smooth between the smooth endoplasmic and rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has a, well, it has a smoother surface, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum has a <laughs> rougher surface. It's in the name. The reason why it has a, a bumpy surface on the rough endoplasmic reticulum is because of the ATS ribosomes on their membranes. Now, endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes are not visible under light microscope. They cannot be picked up by the light microscope because number one, their structure is too small. Number two, it's extremely thin. So the thickness of the membranes are lesser than 200 nanometers. It will not be picked up by the light microscope's limitation in resolution. They are only visible under electron microscope. This over here is an image of the endoplasmic reticulum using the transmission electron microscope. That's what I mean by TEM over there. The orange color line that you can see is the nuclear membrane. And remember, I told you rough endoplasmic reticulum are usually found directly connected to the nuclear membrane. So those green color lines that I'm drawing over there are the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And as you can see on their surface, they seem a little bit grainy. You can see those kind of grainy material. And those grainy material over there, or those grainy uh, kind of substances, are the ribosomes. Too small to be seen using the light microscope. This one over here is another beautiful image captured using the transmission electron microscope. And as you can see, the networks over there, those are the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And I'm just drawing one out to show you the membrane, the cystine, and also the grainy ribosomes on its surface. So that's how you recognize the rough ER under electron microscopes. Functions are going to be quite simple. 
The smooth endoplasmic reticulum's function is for the synthesis and transport of lipids and steroids. Uh, what this just basically means is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has the capability of producing certain types of fats, such as triglycerides, in our body. Examples of steroids that the smooth endoplasmic reticulum can produce will be hormones such as oestrogen, because these are lipid-based hormones. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, because it has those ATS ribosomes on its surface, they have the capability of synthesizing and transporting proteins. Now, some students will ask the question, hey, wait a second, you said that the ribosome synthesizes protein. Now you're saying that the rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizes protein. Which one is it? The ribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum are the ones that are synthesizing the protein. What the rough ER can do is, because it has membranes, it can do something unique where it can transport the proteins. As you can see those orange colored dots, imagine those to be the proteins inside the space of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. What will actually happen is the rough endoplasmic reticulum will form a kind of bubble, as you can see in that diagram, and the proteins will enter this so-called bubble. And the bubble pops out of the endoplasmic reticulum, and the proteins are now transported within this bubble. And that bubble, by the way, is not is known as the vesicle. And if you remember, vesicles are just basically small vacuoles that travel within the cell. And that's how the rough endoplasmic reticulum transports proteins within the cell. So the third organelle that we're going to be looking at is the Golgi apparatus. Some books will refer to this organelle as the Golgi complex or also the Golgi body. It means the same thing. So do not get alarmed when you see the word, when you see other variant or other, vari other variations of the names to this organelle. Again, when we are looking at uh, the structure of the Golgi apparatus, just like the endoplasmic reticulum, it is a single membrane organelle with a fluid-filled space, the sister name. The membranes will be arranged in stacks and they are surrounded by vesicles. Now, one of the biggest issues over here is students get confused when they look at the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum because they kind of look similar to each other. I've drawn one out there for you, an endoplasmic reticulum at the top, just for you to compare it between the Golgi apparatus and the endoplasmic reticulum. What you notice is, number one, the endoplasmic reticulum forms a network. Whereas, and when I say it forms a network, the membranes are interconnected with each other. It forms like a branching. Whereas for the Golgi apparatus, it forms a stack, kind of like a pancake, basically. And more importantly, it is, you should also be aware that the membranes of the Golgi apparatus, the cystine, are curved. They have a kind of curved structure. Uh, they have a curved appearance. Some, some of my students will refer to them as the Wi-Fi signal. And they are not completely wrong, actually. It does look a little bit like the Wi-Fi signal. And of course, Golgi apparatus would have um, a fair bit of vesicles surrounding them. This is a picture of a Golgi apparatus taken under the transmission electron microscope. And of course, we cannot view the Golgi apparatus under the light microscope for the very s same reasons as the endoplasmic reticulum, because the size of the membranes, the stack of membranes are too thin uh, to be resolved under light microscope. You can see over here that the membrane, the cystine, are curved. They form a stack of membranes, and you can also see vesicles surrounding them. The functions of Golgi apparatus include Number one, they produce things known as lysosomes. We are going to cover lysosomes for number four, so you don't have to worry about that. The Golgi apparatus is also the organelle in our cells that package and modify proteins. Now, sometimes, now students will be wondering what does protein modification means. Modifying proteins just basically means changing the structure of the protein for for various reasons, by the way. So. As we are talking about later chapters, we are going to see some examples of this protein modification. But if you want to know an example of it is 
the Golgi apparatus will have the capability of taking carbohydrates and proteins and they will be able to combine these two molecules together to become something known as glycoproteins. Examples of glycoproteins will include antibodies and mucus. Do you have to memorize them right now? No, because we will be looking at antibodies and mucus in later chapters. So you see, in A-levels, this chapter is just an introduction for better or worse things to come, uh, because sometimes this scares students in a way. But you don't have to worry so much, because when we are doing the chapters in the future, I will be referring back to chapter one as a way to link all these chapters in biology together. And as you can see over there as well, the hydrolytic enzymes are just basically en special types of enzymes in the cells. They will enter the Golgi apparatus and they'll be packaged or put into small little vesicles known as lysosomes.